Every brand eventually has to be translated into a website design. But how do you do that to create that same feeling and experience as you did with the logo, colors and graphics? Today I'm going to show you how I made this lovely website design complete with animations for a high-end stationery brand called Wild Plants. Let's jump right in. The very first step to making sure we create branded experiences on the website is to think about the mood and personality of the brand. How do they want someone to feel when they actually navigate through this website? And what is the overall tone? So for example, a brand that is all about great prices and lots of options probably want their website to be easy to navigate and without too many frills. However, a website like Wild Plants, our leading mood words are elegant, calm, and a little bit of whimsy. So that means that we really want to find ways to create this nice and clean base, but add in little details and some deeper colors to create that feeling that you are kind of opening up an exclusive box of stationery. Think like branded wrapping paper, tone on tone shades and gold foiling. You can do the same thing for the website you're designing for. Look back at the strategy and values of the company and try to pick a few leading words. Then focus on connecting them to a few visual elements that can kind of help you build out that world. Next up, we need to have a think about what actions someone is actually going to be taking on the website. Essentially, the website goals. When we know exactly what the user journey is going to look like, we can create little details and design elements that help guide the visitors to those actions. So for example, Wild Plants has a new notebook collection with different forest themed designs that they really want people to pre-order. So one way we can showcase this is to actually add mockups of the different notebooks and add in little little kind of details to create that whimsical but high-end look. We could also take this a step further and add in animation to create a more engaging and exclusive design. Whenever we choose to add an animation, we always want to keep a few things in mind. First, what purpose is this animation actually serving? So in this case, the smooth animation creates that sense of calm and luxury we're after. And we can also help the visitor quickly get an overview of the different designs and kind of encourage them to click on their favorite to learn a bit more. The second thing to keep in mind is how the animations will impact the loading time and environmental footprint of the website. Having super heavy animations across the site can really impact your SEO and also uses more energy. However, animations done right can be one of the most impactful ways to get a lot of information across in a very quick way. So focus on adding strategic animations that don't overwhelm the visitor or takes up too much space. One way to do this is to use Webflow, which are also kindly sponsoring this video. Webflow recently launched their new animations powered by GSAP, which is one of the most efficient and fast web animations options out there. They also added this timeline to the editor, which I can't express enough how much that helps me as a non-coder to just understand how the actual animations work. So let me show you how we actually made this really fun and interactive hero section. The very first thing we wanna do is make sure that we can see this little lightning bolt icon here in the left-hand side panel. So if you can't see it, just head over to the bottom of the interactions panel and switch to GSAP. Let me show you how I created this. So the first step is to set up our structure. Inside the hero section, I've added one div block that's going to hold all my notebooks. I then add a div block inside it and add in the image of the first notebook. Then I can just duplicate this div block and replicate the images. This means that they are all identical in appearance and they also have the same properties, which will be really important later on. First, we're going to create this nice smooth loading animation with the notebooks appearing from the bottom of the screen one by one. Make sure you have your first div block selected and head over to interactions. And then we're gonna click on create new. Then we select the trigger as page load. You can choose to start with one of the templates, which is really helpful, especially when you're starting out or you can create your own one from scratch. So we want our animation to apply to all the notebooks. So we will choose class and then we're gonna choose descendants and add a little star in this field below. Then we can head down and make our customizations in the animated properties. The two things we wanna customize here are the opacity and position on the y-axis. 
I'm gonna have the notebooks go from zero to 100% opacity, and I'm putting the distance as 30 pixels. We did a lot of playing around to find a number that actually made the animation feel really smooth, so have a play around when you actually set up your own. I also want the notebooks to appear with the middle one rising first, and the other one's kind of following. So to get that effect, we need to choose from center. And then to make the animation smoother, we can play around with the E settings. Since the middle notebook is leading, I set it to power one in. If we have a look at the timeline, we can see that we now have the animation going from bottom up, and it also has added the stagger effect. Next up, we want to have a nice interactive element. So I want the notebooks to move slightly when you hover over them to create this really smooth and fun way to encourage people to actually engage and click. So to do that, we're going to select the div block of one of the notebooks rather than the parent one that they all sit in because we want the hover to apply to each notebook individually. Then we create a new interaction and select hover as the trigger. Here we picked rotate to add a nice subtle effect and to give it a little bit more personality I'm also going to add a little bit of movement in the x-axis as well. And finally we want the effect to reverse when we stop hovering. So to do that we just need to add another trigger and set it to mouse leave and set the control as reverse. Now we have this really smooth and slightly playful hero section animation that is just a perfect fit for the wild plants. To create even more fun animations, have a think about how you can add kind of unique graphics as the base for your animations. So one way to do this could be to create a distorted version of a photograph or use a 3D image to create more depth. This is an example I created with endless tools and here's an example of a 3D design created with BNB icons. Have a play around and find unique and creative ways to build out that brand personality. Another area that way too many people, especially designers, overlook is messaging and copy. Beautiful design and great animations take you a great part of the way, but the right messaging that helps the visitor feel seen can be kind of the difference between lots of visits and lots of new leads. Smart copywriting also helps us create that branded experience and helps us improve the website's SEO. So how do you actually approach messaging as a non-copywriter? Well, one option is to team up with someone who is actually a copyright expert, which is what I tend to do. And that's also really fun because you kind of have a creative colleague. But if that's not an option for your project, try to find a few words that the ideal customer would use day to day. So for example, for wild plants, that might be making journaling a daily ritual or reflecting on your goals, for example. If you didn't already have words like this in your brand research, I want to recommend two strategic ways that you can try to find them. The first one is to look at reviews and social media comments. So go to competitor sites and see how people describe the products that they really like and what they didn't like. You can filter by number of stars, for example. Next up, have a read through some blog posts specifically about using the product or service. I like to use Pinterest to find a few different options because that tends to be where a lot of blogs promote their content. With our main hero section and copy ready, let's focus on photography. This is an area that I see a lot of sites fall on. And the important thing here is to make sure that all your images to feel very cohesive and tell the same story. If your client already has great photos, that's lovely, but a lot of times clients ask us to look for stock images. A lot of stock sites actually allow you to use a visual or colored based search, which saves so much time. So focus on finding one kind of leading image that sets the right tone to use as a reference and then try and find examples with variety in how close the images are taken, some with people, some without, and this will help the design feel a lot more dynamic and curated. To bring that extra personality, have a think about how those images are actually cropped and layered together. Straight corners and high contrast can often make images feel a little bit more luxurious, while rounded corners and kind of cut out of different shapes can give a friendly or quirky impression. When you make a website, it really is a blank canvas, so you don't have to create everything in these straight lines. Have fun playing with overlapping or moving photos and combine images with type and illustrations to get more of that dynamic design. 
Finally, let's talk about those little details that can make or break the whole experience of the website itself. Little badges, playful button copy, or an interactive or unique cursor can be the perfect way to bring that brand to life. I hope this example gave you tons of inspiration and that you feel excited to have a play around with the new animation tools in Webflow as well. It's available on all plans so you can go and test it out completely for free. It's all linked down in the description. Thank you so much for watching and just let me know if you have any questions at all down in the comments. Good luck with your projects and I'll see you next time.